Eight months of negotiations have been necessary in order for Netshirvan Barzani to be elected at the head of the Iraqi Kurdistan. We know that the relations between the capital of Iraq, Baghdad, and the capital of the Iraqi Kurdistan, Erbil, are usually tensed. So how are they going to evolve following this nomination? We are going to answer to this question. Here is a part of the content of the interview of Adèle Bakawan by Xavier Martinet in the French podcast about international public policy issues, les enjeux internationaux, on the radio France Culture. My work is only possible thanks to the support of my Patreons. Thank you for visiting the page. Adèle Bakawan is a sociologist, expert of Iraq and Kurdish issues. The journalist first mentions the fact that the new president of the Iraqi Kurdistan is the nephew of the former president Masoud Barzani. Masoud Barzani is an important Kurdish figure who tried to get the independence of Kurdistan through a referendum. Xavier Martinet asks Adel Bakawan if the Iraqi Kurdistan parliamentarians have chosen Masoud Barzani's nephew in order to get more or less the same political line as before. Mr. Bakawan says that with this choice, the Iraqi Kurdistan is going to have both continuity and rupture. Continuity because Netshirvan Barzani, the new president, is in the Kurdish political system since 1991. But also rupture because Netshirvan Barzani is a member of a specific branch within the Kurdish Democratic Party, more open to the world, which wants to modernize the country for the liberalization of the Iraqi Kurdistan, for the normalization of its relations with Baghdad, but also with Tehran, with Ankara and the great international capitals. So this new president represents both continuity and rupture. Xavier Martinez then asks about his legitimacy. It seems to him that it's not very strong. Eight months have been necessary to choose him, only 68 votes favorable to him, compared to the 111 voters. Mr. Bakawan responds that what he called the Kurdish house is, as always, torn goes through many difficulties, political, cultural, geopolitical and administrative. The deputies of the PUK, the other great political faction in Kurdistan, have decided to be absent for the vote, for very complex reasons. To make it simple, Mr. Bakawan explains it with the following. The PUK, Jalal Talabani's party, administers the south of the Iraqi Kurdistan since 1991 whereas the KDP administrates the north of the Iraqi Kurdistan. This division is administrative, political and social. The south is under the influence of Iran, whereas the north is under the influence of Turkey. So the disagreements are very strong. Concerning Kirkuk, for instance, the PUK and the KDP disagree on the person who should be the governor. Same thing, the PUK and the KDP are not able to arrive to compromise in order to propose a unique candidate for the Ministry of Justice. They would also fail to agree on how to redistribute wealth, etc. For all these reasons, the PUK decided not to go to the election of the Iraqi Kurdistan's president. But the fact that the PUK didn't participate to this election, wouldn't it be a risk for the PUK? To be ostracized? asks Xavier Martinet. Well, for Mr. Bakawan, what is tragic for the PUK is that since the death of their leader Jalal Talabani in October 2017, there are many divisions within the movement. They don't have their leader anymore and nobody has a charisma sufficient enough to unite them. The party is divided in four branches. Yes, four branches. So the PDK doesn't know to whom it is talking. To the branch, maybe corresponding to Talabani's family. Maybe to the political office, to the militants, etc. And even within the PUK, it is impossible in this context to have a common position toward Erbil, Baghdad, or on an international scale. 
David Martinet then mentions an article that wrote Mr. Bakawan, in which he explained that it isn't simple for the PDK either because there is a power within the power. Now that Nertshir van Barzani has been elected as president, the ex-president, Masoud Barzani, is still in the party. And the ex-president has a lot of charisma and is an historical figure. The journalist asks if the ex-president, by his charisma, by the historical part that he played in the party, still has power within the system. Mr. Bakawan answers that Mr. Bazani, the ex-president, not only has power within the system, but is the system. When he appears on the media, when he makes a TV statement, he never presents himself as the ex-president, but presents himself as a Barzani. And this name, this family Barzani, this word Barzani is the absolute reference of the Kurdish question. In Iraq, clearly, but also worldwide. So his way of leading changed from a leadership as president of the Iraqi Kurdistan to a leadership as a historical reference. The one who intervenes only when things get really complex, when times are tough, to say it loud and clear, no great political decision can be taken without the consent of Barzani. Xavier Martinet then switches to the relationship between Baghdad and Erbil. Baram Saleh, the president of Iraq elected last October, has presented himself as someone in favor of a rebuilt relationship with the Iraqi Kurdistan. He is Kurd himself. But as a matter of fact, his policy seems quite ambiguous when you think about the fact that he assists the Prime Minister of Turkey, Erdogan, in its strikes in the Iraqi Kurdistan. Mr. Bakawan answers that, once again, there is a problem of legitimacy. Baram Saleh is recognized by the Shia in the south, by a part of the Sunnis in the center, by the south of the Iraqi Kurdistan, but not by the north of the Iraqi Kurdistan. In other words, the government of Nadir van Barzani does not really recognize Baram Saleh as someone who can represent the Kurdish interests in Baghdad. He is Kurd, president of Iraq, but in the end, he is quite isolated as a Kurd in Baghdad. What is the most urgent thing to negotiate now between Erbil and Baghdad? Then asks the journalist. Wouldn't it be the potential regain of control by the Kurdish armed force, the Peshmergas, in the south of Kurdistan? Mr. Bakawan answers that there are a couple of things to negotiate. First, the disputed territories between Baghdad and Erbil. On this matter, the atmosphere is quite good between the Prime Minister of Iraq Adil Abdoumadi and the Kurd leaders because he is seen as pro-Kurd. Secondly, the way in which natural resources should be allocated. This is also an issue. And thirdly, the issue about the status of the Peshmegas, the Kurdish combatants. Those three issues are still a bone of contention between Iraq and Kurdistan. Don't forget to put a like on this video. Thank you for watching Foreign Chronicles et à bientôt